Let's bring in our first guest, Henry Hartvelt, is a president at Atmosphere Research Group with a focus on consumer businesses. Uh, Henry, welcome to the show. Thanks for being on the Schwab Network. Hello, Oliver. So we just went through a season where it looked like the consumer kind of splurged around the holiday season. What did we leave in the tank? Well, look, we look at the travel industry and what we saw is that that travelers prioritized traveling for Christmas. Uh, we saw record demand at Thanksgiving, record demand for the Christmas New Year period. Importantly, operationally, overall pretty good. And we believe that the travel industry is poised for another very solid year in 2024. When we say uh, very solid, is that enough uh, to sustain a pretty deep amount of competition within this sector now between Airbnb that's got its foothold, the booking sites that have to compete with uh, the uh, search engines, and then the search engines that have to compete with AI amongst each other. I mean, what's the way to play this? Look, no, uh, well, first, you know, as I told your booking uh, uh, colleague, we're not an, an equities research sure. firm, so I'm not going to speak about stocks specifically. But to the point that you made on the hotel and lodging space, uh, we're seeing the hotels really hold their own against the vacation rental networks such as Airbnb and Verbo, which is part of Expedia Group. While those uh, vacation rental sites are very popular, people like the consistency, the promise, uh, uh, and the trust that hotels are able to deliver, in particular, the larger brands. So the Hilton Worldwide's, Hyatt's, Marriott International's, et cetera. Those organizations are competing very well. And importantly, especially at their mid-scale and higher brands, they're able to raise rate and hold up rate without having to resort to extensive, extensive discounting. Okay, so that's a big part of it is they can uh, maintain those price points without getting pinched. Uh, has the inflation pressure eased? So if the inflation pressure, our macro conversation is centered around inflation pressures easing. If that's the case and they don't have to discount, then I would imagine we should expect some decent margins from these companies. Yeah, I think that you will see decent margins coming from the online booking companies. So Expedia Group, Booking Group. I think that you will see the hotels reporting uh, 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 good margins. I think that you will see airlines and cruise lines also reporting good margins. Now, look, travel is a price led industry. And one of the interesting things about travel, unlike a lot of other uh, industries, there is near perfect access for us as consumers into the price for almost any travel good, any travel service. So that means it's very easy for us to shop and compare. And you couple that with the low levels of loyalty, travelers are mercenary. We are shopping trip to trip, brand to brand. So uh, whether you are in the cruise line, the hotel space, the airline space, you cannot take customers for granted. Um, but you know, that right now demand appears to be outstripping supply. Do the airlines have their act together after a few major slip ups over the past year? I'm thinking about Southwest in particular, but there's a lot of merger activity, too. What's going to be the main story this year for that sector? Yeah, so let's break that down. First, over Christmas, we saw pretty good operational performance by all airlines. There was a problem with Southwest at Midway during Christmas because of bad weather and uh, the limited landing capabilities that Midway Airport has, a function of the fact it's built up on all four sides. So, so there were, was a small problem there, but overall Southwest performed very well, uh, as did the rest of the industry, uh, and that's great. Um, you know, I think going forward, there are uh, two mergers on the horizon. One is JetBlue Spirit, <clears throat> excuse me, and the other is between Alaska and Hawaiian. Um, the jury's out literally on uh, uh, the JetBlue Spirit uh, combination, and I'm not sure if that will get DOT approval and DOJ approval. I think uh, Alaska Hawaiian will face uh, an easier go of it because those two airlines are more similar. Um, but of course, if uh, you know, it will take a while for the uh, Alaska Hawaiian merger to even to get to the point of being heard by the Department of Justice. Okay, I like that. So there's a lot of moving parts. You're really gonna have to take it piece by piece. If we take that into its yeah. most literal interpretation, piece by piece. How about right. Boeing's role as a supplier right now? Are you confident that uh, they're going to be able to deliver 
functioning 737s. The story yesterday, Henry, that they told the, uh, you know, that someone found a loose bolt, like blew my mind that that's still stuff. We're right, doing. Oliver. So you're, you're, you, you mentioned something that came out a couple of days ago that there is a problem with the rudder assembly on the 737 MAX jet. It's an easily fixable uh, pr uh, uh, problem for an airline to, to address. The planes are not grounded. Um, it just, they have to get to a maintenance facility, be inspected, uh, and have, uh, if there is a problem, that has to be repaired. So that's good. And I see that as a glitch. And frankly, these kinds of things are discovered all the time with airplanes. So no one should be panicked about that. I remain concerned about Boeing's ability to ramp up production. They say they want to produce more 737 jets as well as their 787 Dreamliner jets. And the 777X, the next version of the Boeing 777 long haul plane, is still behind schedule. So there are a lot of questions there. Okay. So uh, you don't think that this is uh, any indication that they are uh, lackadaisical in the production of this? Because I feel like it's got to be zero tolerance for Boeing at this point. Like, they got to get this no, right. I, look, Boeing is committed to building safe aircraft, and I don't think that they're taking any of these problems in a lackadaisical manner. Um, I think they take them seriously, and I think that they very much want to get back to uh, uh, being a much more reliable producer of aircraft. And by the way, same over at Airbus, they're trying to make sure they can produce as many aircraft as possible. What frankly concerns me about Boeing is the lack of vision that company has. They don't have mm. any new aircraft on the drawing board. There is nothing new to offer airlines right now. And you know, Boeing is the airline that brought us the jet age. And we went from the first jet, the 707 to the 747 jumbo in 10 years. Boeing has nothing new on the drawing board right now, and I'm more worried about that because, frankly, uh, uh, China is working on new aircraft. Airbus, you know, is certainly exploring things. Boeing is just sitting there saying, oh, look at our 737s and look at our 787s. <laughs> Henry, I uh, love the analysis and looking forward to more of it this year. Appreciate you joining us. Thank you.